U.S. President Donald Trump is vowing to defeat ISIL, also known as ISIS and Daesh. We have to get rid of ISIS. We have to get rid of ISIS. We have no choice. As Russia and the U.S. seem poised to work together in new ways to fight terrorism. Of course, we paid attention to the pre-election declarations of Donald Trump, including those about the readiness and determination to jointly fight the Islamic State. Russia and President Putin has repeatedly said that it is ready to walk its part of the path to move the dialogue with Washington into a constructive mode in order to find effective answers to the challenges of terrorism. Both countries have been targeting ISIL with airstrikes, but some U.S. politicians say defeating the militants will require beating them on the ground in Raqqa, Syria, essentially the group's capital. Door to door, block by block, urban warfare. Iraqi forces operating with U.S. assistance have made progress against the group in Mosul, but it's not clear which ground forces might take on ISIL in neighboring Syria. Trump has not laid out a detailed plan for how the U.S. will move forward. I think he ran under the impression that he could flip a switch and all of a sudden something can happen, and it's just not that easy. And so I think what they're going to see is it's a lot of boots on the ground. And that will be when Donald Trump will have to decide, you know, do I put all my chips down on the indigenous forces or do I send in U.S. troops? Who does the fighting may depend on the outcome of Russian and Turkish-led peace talks aimed at ending the civil war in Syria. But even a military victory on the ground that destroys ISIL's home base in Raqqa won't eliminate the global terrorism threat the group presents. Something like 40,000 people have gone to the Middle East to join this organization. Some of them will come home, some of them will try to resume normal lives and reject what they, they did with, with Daesh. Others will be perhaps uh, these Trojan horse type figures, ones that will be interested in carrying out terrorist attacks. It's going to be a difficult challenge for law enforcement and for intelligence to separate the ones who have terrorist ambitions from the ones who just want to get on and with ordinary lives and perhaps be helpful in the sense that they can counter the ISIS message. And finally, the conditions that help create ISIL will need to be addressed. That will mean bringing economic opportunities and political stability to the region. As long as there is no reason for hope, that is what ISIS counts on. You know, they look for discord. And so the longer this economic disruption happens in the region, the harder it's going to be to find a peaceful solution. But finding hope may be the biggest challenge of all. Jim Spellman, CGTN, Washington.